So this is unit five on quadratic functions. So probably before we go too far, we'll redefine uh, a few terms. So the first one was quadratic expression. So quadratic expressions are of the form x squared, for example, x squared plus 2x as a quadratic expression, even x squared by itself, or you could have x squared plus 3x plus 2. Uh, you could have x squared or minus 3x squared plus 5, something like that. So these are all expressions. You notice that there's no equal sign here. It's just an expression in X. But what's important is that you have to have an X squared somewhere in your expression, okay? That to make it a quadratic expression, okay? If that X squared is not there, it's not an expression. So it might be a linear expression, for example, x plus two, that's a linear expression. There's no power two here. So that would be linear expression. So not much you can do with these is there. Maybe we can factorize it. So x, x plus two, um, not anything to do there. x squared, you can't do anything with that really. So. This one could be x plus one, x plus two. So you can factorize them. So we can be factorized sometimes. All right, but nothing else to do there. We just can maybe can factorize, but nothing else uh, for expressions. But for quadratic equations, equations, which you spent a lot of time on already the last couple of weeks. So they could be in the same form, but they have an equal sign and maybe some number. So x squared plus 2x equals zero. Okay. Um, you could have this one here, x squared plus 3x plus 2. All right. And you learned how to factorize these, and then we solve the equation. So we had x, x plus two equals zero. So x equals zero or minus two, for example. This one can be factorized as well, x plus one, x plus two equals zero. So x would be minus one and minus two, isn't it? For example. So these can be solved. We normally solve equations. So expressions may be factorized. We can factorize many of them. But when you have equations, we're normally trying to solve them. And we need an equals something, an equal sign. That's how we know it's an equation. So can often be solved. Not always. Remember, when your discriminant is negative, we can't solve the equation. So equations are normally written so we're trying to solve them. That's the normal goal of, of equations. We're usually solving them. Um, the third one is the topic of this week and next week, functions. So quadratic functions. Now, also before we go on, Quadratic equations can be equations in one variable. I should have written that there. So these could be called equations in one variable. The variable being x, okay? There's only one variable. It's written twice or three times, uh, twice usually or once. But there's only one kind of variable, x. So only one variable. But quadratic equ functions can also be written as equations in two variables. 
in two variables. So usually of the form y equals x squared. This would be the simplest function you'll find, y equals x squared. We could also write y equals 2x squared minus 3x. That would be another quadratic function. Or y equals minus x squared plus 4. That's another function. OK. You're probably wondering why they use this word function. OK. So let's look at what functions are. Now, this is actually going into grade 10 work. So it's a bit extra, but we have a bit of time. So let's look at it. Functions. Now, the definition, there is a definition for functions, but let's look at some examples. So let me draw the most basic quadratic function, which would be y equals x squared. We'll do that one here. And I'll draw another one, but uh, let's do it some, let's, uh, let's just do it the basic one, but upside down. So this would be y equals minus x squared. We'll talk more about graphs later. Now, what we do, we use what's called a vertical line test. So how do we know these are functions? These are functions. They must pass the vertical line test. Sounds a bit complicated, it's not. Okay, so what we do, if you're given a graph, so not all graphs represent functions, they're not all functions, okay? So what we'll do, we'll do this, what's called a vertical line test. So what you do, you take a, another colored pen or the same color if you like, but we draw vertical lines like this, okay? And we'll do this one as well. And what you notice is that each time this green line only touches once. So once, 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 once. So this will pass the vertical line test. It only touches one time. It cannot touch more than one time. So can only touch the graph once. I've done it many times, but you're only allowed to touch one time every time you cut the graph. And the same when the graph is upside down. Okay. So this is also a function because when you cut with your green line, you're only cutting one time. So that's how we know that these are functions but you'll find other kinds of graphs and not functions. So you could imagine, I've actually drawn it down there, but I'll do it again, because that was for the last class. So imagine you have a circle, which you will learn in grade 10. So this could be the equation, x squared plus y squared equals nine. So that means this is a circle with center zero, zero and radius three, but you'll learn more about that grade 10. So don't worry about that at the moment. But if you try to do your vertical line test on a circle, you can see what happens. You're going to cut twice. So two times here, two times there, two times there. So anywhere on the graph which cuts twice, this is not a function. It's an equation in two variables, no problem. We could write equation in two variables. That's okay, but it's not a function because you've cut the graph twice. So this is not a function. Okay, 
Another example would be a cubic graph. When you come to grade 10, you'll see graphs like this, okay? So this is also a function. This is a cubic function. So if you take your green pen again, when you cut the graph anywhere, you're only going to cut one time, which makes it a function. So we can call that a cubic function. So that could be something like y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. That would be an example of a cubic function. Again, you'll do this in grade 10, not now. So that's how you know a graph is a function or not. And all of your quadratics either look like, let's go down, either look like this or this. Okay, so these are the two possible kinds of quadratic functions you get. So in this case, this quadratic will open upwards. So open upwards. And these arrows tell you the graph just keeps going forever, okay? And this graph here opens downwards. So down, and this one will open up. So another word, another words you see sometimes in books that are like the hat. This is a hat shape. Easy to remember, because you got someone's face here and this is like a hat so this is a hat shape this is a cup shape because it looks like a cup so these are two words you may see in other books and you may see me use them sometimes but it's not very technical is it cat hat and cup so open upwards and open downwards we normally use but go back to look at our picture here now, you, you do see parabolas like very often in many, many contexts. So parabola is actually the geometric word. This is a geometric word. So it's usually referring to the shape. It's a geometric word. It's not an algebraic word. Normally, we use quadratic for algebraic. Quadratic graph. It's the same thing, actually. The parabola is the quadratic graph. The quadratic is normally an algebraic word, not a geometric word. So quadratic refers to algebraic ideas and parabola is normally referring to the shape, the actual picture or you call a quadratic graph, it's the same thing. Now, in this picture here, they've got a bridge. This is the Golden Gate Bridge, I think, from San Francisco. But you look at the shape here, they've used this as an example, but this actually is not exactly a parabola. It has a different name called catenary, but it's actually this shape. So this is actually not a parabola. It has a different equation. is close, but not exact, exactly. It's a, it's, the equation is different. Um, some examples here, these look like fountains. So if you actually had a hose in your garden and you point the hose upwards, you'll get this shape here. Okay, you will get a parabola from a hose. If you play basketball, and this is the hoop here, and you shoot the ball, this will also give a parabola shape, always, unless the wind acts on it or some, some, there's some disturbance to the ball. But if it's not very windy and there's nothing affecting the ball apart from gravity, then this will give a parabola shape. Also, um, when you do archery, when you have a target, okay, this is your bow, and then you shoot your arrow out. If you're aiming for the target, 
you'll need to point upwards a little bit, don't you? Because it will go up and then it will come down a bit. And he's obviously missed the target, right? So in the Olympics, this is actually 70 meters. So you can imagine that's about three times the length of the swimming pool we had at school. So that's actually quite a long way. So if you ever watch the Olympics, they got to hit the target, which is about the size of a CD. That's the center, the yellow part. So that's actually the size of a CD disc. So it's actually quite hard to hit. So these are some applications of grabblers. You do see them quite a lot. And you're gonna come across them a lot in grade 10 as well. But that's your general form here. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C, which you've seen a lot of. The only thing you see here is it's got a Y now, which means we're graphing. So whenever you see stuff like this, you think about graphs. Okay, so think about graphs when you see a Y and then a quadratic. Now, A, B, and C are constants, so some number. It could be fraction, could be decimal, whole numbers, whatever. But A is not equal to zero. A cannot be zero. Because if you had that, you'd have Y equals zero X squared plus two X plus three. Okay, so if A was zero, it wouldn't be a quadratic. It would be linear. That's a linear function. Okay, so A cannot be zero. It can be anything but zero. It can be negative, it can be positive, and it can be fractions too, or decimals. So here's an example. Let's look at these real quick. You can do some work in a minute. So we've got a quadratic here. Y equals three X squared minus two X minus one. Find the value of A, B, and C. Luckily, it's already written in the correct form. So it's got to be in the form A, X squared plus B, X plus C. A always goes with X squared. B always goes with X and C is the constant. This is the number by itself. So in this case, we can see that A is three here. B is minus two and C is minus one just like that. They may be written in a different order, two minus X squared plus three X. So in this case, A would be negative one, B would be three and C is two. So don't get confused. You need to look at A being with X squared and B goes with X and C goes with two, even though the order is not in the standard order. Okay, so be careful with that. Okay, which function is a quadratic function and why? So we need to look at having the standard form. What they call here the standard form. It's in standard form. So that's AX squared plus BX plus C. You may need to rearrange it as well. But if we look here, we got x squared plus 6x plus 9. Well, this is a quadratic because it's in the standard form. And then we can say that a is 1, b is 6, and c is 9. So this is OK. This is a quadratic function. But if you look at this one, we need to expand it first. So you need to turn that into the standard form. y equals x squared plus 3x. So this is okay. We've got the standard form, but we're just missing the constant, which is fine. So A is one and B is three and C is not here. So it must be zero. So don't forget that. So C is zero, but you must have this X squared term somewhere here and that one as well there. If you look at question three, three minus four X, the problem is there's no X squared term. So that could be written actually as Y equals three minus four X plus zero X squared. I put that there to show that it's actually not there because zero X squared is zero, isn't it? So this is not a quadratic, so not in 
standard form SF for standard form here. Okay, so this is actually a linear, this is linear function, which will give you a straight line when you graph that. It'll have a negative slope and a y-intercept of three, but we'll, we'll do more on linear functions later. Okay, you can work on this for a while. Exercise one, shouldn't take you too long. Um, try to do every one. So let's do the first one together. We need to write down the value of A, B, and C. So this is already in the standard form, isn't it? So we've got A, which is two, B minus seven, and C is three. So I just want to know what is the value of A, B, and C. So two minus seven and three. That's all you need to do for this question. And then we'll move on later. So this one you need to expand. So expand first. Now, when you expand this one, just multiply the minus sign into the first factor. Don't multiply into here as well. So you'll end up with minus X minus three, and then multiply that to X plus five like that, expand this one. This one's okay, you can do that quickly. Now expand the minus sign in for this one. Expand your minus sign into there. Expand, expand, this one is okay to do. All right, so you do them for say five minutes. Let's go to 940. Okay, we'll do some answers. Just to check you're on the right track. This is very straightforward stuff. So in this one, we had to expand to give x squared minus 2x. So a is 1, b is minus 2, and there's no c, there's no constant, so that would be 0. So in this one, instead of me expanding it out, I'll get the answer key out. So we've got for question three, you should have minus one, minus eight, and minus 15. So check on this one if you have not got those values there. Question four, we get one, six, and five. You need to expand that first. This is the A value, so that's going to be four. There's no B, X. B is zero here. So B would be zero and C is minus one. When we expand that, we're going to get minus X squared plus X plus 12. So you're going to get minus one, one and 12. Now, when you have these equations in two variables, Y equals minus X squared plus X plus 12. Now, when we had equations before, for example, if it was written the same, but we had zero plus 12, you were able to bring these to the other side, weren't you? And then change the sign like that. So you could change your expression by moving it to the other side. But when you've got functions, you can't do that because you have a Y here. It's not zero anymore. So you're not able to take this to the other side. Cannot, cannot move this. So you can't take this and put it on the other side because that means the Y would have to come over and it become minus Y. Just becomes messy. It's not zero. So when you're doing functions, you can't actually move to the other side. Okay, like you were doing with equations. So you can't have one minus one minus 12. So this is the only, only possible answer is here. So this was minus four plus X squared. So A is one, B is zero, C is minus four for that one. So question eight, if you expand that, you'll get two minus five, and minus three after expanding this one here. 
okay? In question nine, you'll get minus two, seven and 12 by multiplying this minus sign in there. And the last one, minus four. So that's A. B is 11. So that's 11. And C is minus six. So that's the answer for that exercise there. Straightforward. You just ask to recognize what A, B, and C are. And that may require um, some manipulation, some expanding and stuff like that. Okay, so in this question here, we won't get a lot more done today. We might look at a few graphs, but let's see how we go for time. So I want to know, is this a quadratic function or not? So look at your form. It's in the correct form, isn't it? AX squared plus BX plus C. So it's in this form. So this is a quadratic function, yes. Okay, reason we write in, in standard form, which is that. So AX squared plus BX plus C. So it's in standard form. And then you can write A is one, B is minus two, C is eight. Okay, but if you look at question three, you can see this is not in standard form because there's no x squared. There's no x squared value. So this will not be a quadratic function. So tick that. This is actually a linear function because it's in the form y equals mx plus c. So linear functions are in this form, mx plus c. And okay, so we'd say not in standard form ax squared plus bx plus c. So just write that down and then you just stop there. Okay, so you finish that exercise and we'll go through the answers in a minute. So I'll make it a bit smaller. So you either have actually, you either have your textbook or you have your tablet. So you have one or the other, just work in your textbook if you don't have a tablet, a few of you don't. I do recommend you get tablets and learn how to use them though, because I think you're gonna need that in the future. You need it now actually, but your life is much easier with the tablet. Okay, so you do the next one, just expand. You see you've got a bracket, so you need to multiply this out first. So y equals x squared plus three x. Okay, so question two here, if you expand, you'll get x squared plus three x. So this is obviously a quadratic function because you have x squared present. So yes, and that's in standard form. And we'll just write down a is one, b is three and c is zero. In that case, there's no constant in this one. You don't have to have a constant. And you don't have to have the B term either, but you must have X squared, that's the key. And this one's missing X squared. So that makes it linear in this, when it's written in this form here. So this one is okay. You could rewrite it if you want, minus X squared plus two X plus one. So that's in standard form, which is always written as AX squared plus BX plus C. And yes, it's a quadratic function. So A is minus one, B is two, C is one in that question. So question five, well, this is obviously a quadratic. And so we can write in standard form. And A is one, B is two, C is three. Again, this is in quadratic form. We can see it's the standard form of a quadratic. So in standard form and the A values would be two, the B value is minus 10 and C is eight. Okay, now this is linear because we're in the form minus, 
we could write that as minus x plus six. So this in the form mx plus c. So this is a linear, linear. This is not quadratic. So not in standard form. So it's a linear function. So whenever it's in the form mx plus c, so some number in x plus a constant that is in a linear function. And c could be zero here, that's no problem. But that's what a linear function looks like. So this is, again, this looks like a quadratic. So quadratic in standard form. And a is two. B is minus one, C is minus seven, okay? Number nine looks like linear, doesn't it? So this is again, this is in a linear, linear function. There's no X squared term. So this is not in standard form of a quadratic not in standard form. Um, so we just stop there. When it's not in standard form, we don't talk about ABC anymore. So question 10, this looks like a quadratic. Okay, it's in standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C. And A is six. B is minus one, C is minus 70. So we can have really large numbers as you saw recently that in the quadratics can have big numbers too. Can have fractions, can have decimals, can be positive or negative, for example. So the most basic graph you get looks like this, Y equals AX squared. And A cannot be zero. If A is zero, you'll just have y equals zero, which is a straight line. Okay, so a cannot be zero. Okay, so here's um, the Desmos program. This is really useful when you want to start checking graphs and things. So if a is one, you'll end up with y equals x squared. So this is the most simple graph you're gonna find, isn't it? y equals x squared. So in this case, a is one. So let's see if I could set that up as a slider A, what happens? A, oh, this is cool. Okay, so I'll do it this way. So A, X squared, okay? So in this case, A is one. So what if we make A bigger? What happens to this graph here? See, as A gets larger, that's A equals three. So this is three X squared here. What if you go up more to four? You see it's getting narrower. Keep going up all the way to 10. So you've got a really narrow graph, okay? This is Y equals 10 X squared, this one here. So let's come back down to A equals one. You see it's getting wider and wider there. So that's A equals one. So this is Y equals X squared here, this shape here. Now, if you make this smaller, now it's still positive, right? Look at that. So now it's going towards zero. That's point one. Okay, you can actually make that smaller than point one. What's gonna happen next? So A equals zero is a straight line. See, this is the line y equals zero. You see this line here? That's the equation y equals zero. So I could write that on there, but it will disappear. So this is the line y equals zero there. But what if I go negative? What happens? Look at the graph goes down to become a straight line when a is zero. But when A is negative, you're going to go as the hat shape now, opening downward. So this is opening up. See, opening up, narrow, as A gets smaller and smaller and smaller. 
down to one and then it will still be positive but less than one now it's getting wider and wider it's going towards the line and then it, when you get to a is zero you end up with a straight line okay and when it becomes negative it'll get narrower but it will still be pointing downwards you see that where's my hand there so if you keep making it negative, so this would be minus three X squared and get narrower, narrower, narrower like that to minus 10. I think they can be changed as well to slide it, but that's how that works. Okay, so that's the first kind of graph you need to be aware of. So when you see that visually, you can see what's actually happening. And if you added a number like, plus one, you'll get the same kind of graph, but now we have a y-intercept, which is one. That one there is this number here. And we'll do that. This is another kind of graph you'll learn. And then the same idea, the A will change, and then it just flips around. Okay, I could make that another slide, or I can make that C. Can I make that C? So add slider. So now I can change both. I can move this up and down and this one will make the shape change. So I'm gonna talk more about that later, but it gives you the idea of what they look like. And when you do your homework, you can use this program to check your answers as well, that you have the right shape. So that's up and down that one. And we can also add the BX in here and that will change where the graph is as well. But we'll look at that next week.